Hi cuties, so the PlayStation 1 was home to some of the greatest video games ever, like Metal Gear Solid, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, Gran Turismo, and if you make a top 10 list, you gotta have one of the three Spyro games in it or I don't trust you, you fudging lizard. The PS1 Spyro Trilogy is my personal favorite out of all platform games ever, and the art style, gameplay, and soundtrack are still unmatched to this day, boy. Nowadays, we know Insomniac as the delicious studio who is delivering the best titles the PlayStation 5 has to offer, such as Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank, but back in 1998, a couple years after dropping this weird-ass FPS game, Disruptor, they dropped the classic Spyro the Dragon. But before we charge ahead, let's take it back a spell, shall we, and discuss how this purple bastard came to be. So around this time, we had already gotten the classic Super Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot games, so after the poor performance sale-wise of Disruptor, Insomniac decided to switch gears and try to conjure some fire-ass concepts. Get it? <laughs> it took them only a year to develop this beautiful game, and Spyro went through a myriad of changes, such as going from being named Pete <laughs> to Pyro, until they landed on Spyro. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't go with fucking Pete the Dragon. Anyways, they also were going to make him a green dragon at first, but if you've played Spyro, you know them beautiful green grassy fields would have blended in with Spyro too much, so they landed on the iconic purple and yellow. After a few more demos and prototypes, they finally dropped the banger in late 1998 in Europe and the US, and then 1999 in Japan. Spyro the Dragon released two obviously amazing reviews, come on, and was praised for its incredible graphics at the time, the beautiful soundtrack composed by the drummer of the band The Police, Stuart Copeland, and obviously the non-stop fun open-ended gameplay. Allow me to just harp on Stuart Copeland real quick because the importance of these game soundtracks cannot be understated at all, y'all. The music in this game is so special and funky and really percussion heavy, obviously with him being a drummer, which is what I think leads it to be so addictive and just makes you bob your head to the funkiness like, ugh. The game itself has a cutesy poopsy story about defeating Nasty Nork as Spyro with your fairy friend Sparks at your side, but obviously the platform gym collectathon gameplay is the star here, and I am a firm believer Believer that Spyro still has some of the smoothest platform controls to this day. Move with the left stick, jump with X, head charge speed up attack with square, glide with triangle, and blow that fire with circle. This game is just so fucking good, man. Just a light-hearted, whimsical blast as you collect dragon eggs, gems, fight bosses, and take in the timeless art style that I actually use as a desktop wallpaper for my PC. <laughs> Despite being marketed towards children, it seems people of all age demographics loved it as it sold 5 million copies within a year and spawned the sequel, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, or Gateway to Glimmer for the European homies. Out of the trilogy, I gotta say, I feel this one is low-key underrated, but not because it's bad or anything, it's just all three games are so fudging good, bro. Spyro in this one actually switched voice actors to fucking Spongebob. Yeah, bro, Tom Kenny took the reins from Carlos, I'm not even going to butcher his last name, I'm sorry, but respect. Tom Kenny also voiced several other characters, as well as Mr. Krabs' voice actor, ironically being in the game as well. Spyro 2 is a perfect sequel, which dropped barely a year later, in late 1999. Despite not having as many hub worlds as the first, it has a slew of improvements such as hovering, climbing, swimming, which blew my mind as a child not seeing my man Spyro drown to death in a body of water. Can I just say too, I don't think water has to ever look better in a video game than in these Spyro ones. I mean, how can this be topped bro? I want to slurp this up! Spyro 2 as a whole package just feels like an improvement upon the first in every way, with each world actually having some sort of backstory to them as opposed to just having to save dragons like in the first one. The replayability was doubled due to these awesome new orb challenges which still whoop my ass to this day, I'll be honest, and the increase in dialogue with a bunch of fully voiced NPCs to mess around with. As for the plot, it's a little bit better, I guess, but as I said prior, it's never been the series selling point, guys. Spyro 2 just revolves around Spyro taking a well-deserved vacation after beating Nork's ass, but he gets sucked through a portal by Elora, the Professor, and Hunter the Cheetah, which also spawns one of the best Spyro clips ever. Hey, stop staring! Haven't you guys ever seen a dragon before? You're a dragon? You got a problem with that pussy? But yeah. They need Spyro's help with Ripto, who's an asshole, yada yada yada. You have to collect these talismans throughout the realm of Avalar to stop Ripto, and that's the game. 
Spyro 2 reviewed just as good, if not better than the first, and in the community, it seems to me like it's a toss-up depending on who you ask if they like it better than the first. Me personally, you'll have to wait until the end for the Certified Ripper ranking. So, I suppose that means we must move on to the final Insomniac Spyro game, Year of the Dragon. It was titled this because it came out during the Year of the Dragon in the Chinese Zodiac. Wow, who would have thunk? Now, once again, only a year later, they cooked up the finale to their trilogy, which is bonkers. I mean, remember when sequels used to actually come out in a timely manner, fellas? <laughs> Let me stop acting like a boomer. Anyways, Spyro 3 expanded upon the prior two games in a lot of ways. In my personal correct Ripper opinion, it has the most colorful, wide spanning, and unique levels in the entire trilogy. Not only that, it was the first Spyro game to allow other playable characters with up to nine different critters to play around with. Depending on who you ask, they're amazingly fun additions, but Others obviously just want to stick to the purple bastard, understandably so. Some of the mini games from Spyro 2 make a return here, however they added some new ones like the gunfight and skateboard ones which are just the fucking best man. Being able to skateboard as Spyro to my little 4 year old brain was like adding peanut butter to jelly on a sandwich for real. The first home slash hub area in Spyro 3 is my favorite in the franchise and once again look at that fucking water, I need to bathe in that before I die. Now I will be honest with y'all, Spyro 3 was my first one that I beat as a kid, so there is some very heavy bias at play. But now that I'm done hiding that secret from y'all and we can be fully transparent with one another, I still gotta say, I think it's the best Spyro game ever fucking made, man. It's longer, has so many different tasks and mini games and characters which may be tedious for some, but it's a blast for meh. I'm curious to see what y'all are thinking in the comments though for real because I know it's a toss up with like every human being I've ever asked. You genuinely can't go wrong with any of the games, and I believe they're all classics in their own manner, so I won't be giving them like scores individually. However, for the first official Ripper ranking, I'm gonna say for me, it's gotta go Spyro 3, Spyro 2, and Spyro 1. They genuinely did just get better and better with every single release, and in terms of video game trilogies, it's gotta be top 5. The consistency is just unmatched. Sadly, this was Insomniac's last game in the franchise as they pretty much admitted they didn't really have anything else for Spyro, which makes sense in hindsight when you see the amount of different playable characters in Spyro 3. They went on to cook up the fantastic Ratchet & Clank series which has a similar level of fun factor, and Spyro continued with a bunch of mediocre titles. I mean, the next one, Enter the Dragonfly for example, released in what seemed to be like an alpha state because it was so fucking rushed, and I know a lot of people liked A Hero's Tale and maybe some parts of the Legend of Spyro games, but none of them can even come close to the OG3 PS1 Spyro classics. Which is why they actually were remastered slash remade in 2018 as the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Shout out to Toys for Bob who did a pretty damn good job with this repackaging, although I will complain and say it was slightly neglected after release because there's still some bugs and oddities that can occur nearly 6 years later. Overall though, this is a fantastic starting point if you've never played these games and perhaps you're interested after watching this video. It's actually sold over like 10 million copies now, which means the dream is still alive for a full-fledged good Spyro reboot. <laughs> Fingers crossed, my lovelies. That's about it though. I've always wanted to talk about one of my favorite comfort games and honestly just an iconic character that seems to be slightly underappreciated despite being a mascot for an entire generation at one point. But yeah, I love y'all so much. I'm like a smidge away from hitting that 400 sub mark, so thank y'all so very much for that. I be shedding tears when I see all of your comments, even the stinky ones. But yeah, drop a fireball on the like, head charge slam into the subscribe, and uh, I love you guys. Bye!